So you might remember back from being a toddler that if you're playing in a sandbox and you find a worm, that in some cases you can actually cut it in half and it becomes two worms. It grows both ends back. If you first teach the worm something, like to respond to an electrical shock in a certain way, do you think that when the worm is cut in half, only the side where the head was is going to remember? Or when you cut it in half and both sides regenerate, both worms have that same instinct, that same memory, they have learned the same thing. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about a man whose research team actually did that work and has found some incredible results. Because the extraordinary truth is that both halves that are regenerated end up creating a full worm with the memory. Where did it come from? Like both halves had to make a new half. One had to make the top half where the brain, like you would think would be, did it create a brain with the memory built in already? How did it know that when it got cut in half? There's some serious questions here that lead us down quite the rabbit hole. If the worm had an offspring, would the offspring know? Is it epigenetic based? How is this working? And in a nutshell, it's because there is more communication methods in the body besides neurons, besides DNA, and besides RNA. In fact, there's a whole bunch of them. Evolution has discovered many, many, many types of information processing between cells. I mean, for some reason, we never talk about any of the others, mostly because they're poorly understood. They also work usually incredibly slowly. There are also new mechanisms and nobody's really sat down and tried to figure out exactly how those interconnect in a way that actually processes information. But nonetheless, there's many ways that a complex adaptive system like a biological creature can adapt to its environment and learn from that environment. So a lot of these different forms of communication work on bioelectricity. So today I'm generally going to be talking about this as bioelectric learning. It's electrical signaling, but it's very different from the way neurons work. It's not about like an axon and a dendrite and like hitting a threshold and then sending out the signal and reattaching to the neighbors in the same way at all. But there are patterns, these bioelectrical patterns that can do all sorts of different things. Maybe in some cases actually that does work a little bit like a neuron, but in a lot of cases you can actually send a biological electrical signal into a group of cells and they can interpret that in a way that starts a cascading effect and can go all the way into creating something like an eyeball. I mean, think about that, regenerating a limb, creating an eye, creating an organ, creating a part of a body, sometimes a fairly simple in relative terms to what it's creating, signal can create one of those body parts. This is straight fact science stuff. So we have to explore where is that coming from? Like what kind of little signal is like, go make an eyeball and then everything else is built into the cells somehow, including where to stop and which types of cells to put the eyeball together. All of these weird things are all communicated somehow with a fairly simple signal. like go do that, and then it just knows how to do that. Now, in the world of developmental biology and regenerative medicine, few names are as prominent as this one, Michael Levin. Now, his groundbreaking research and innovative approach to understanding cellular behavior and regeneration have paved the way for potentially a truly revolutionary advance in medicine. Michael Levin's education is really interesting too because he weaved biology and computational sciences in at different times in his career and his education. And I think that's part of why he was able to discover some of this, of course, with a great team of super helpful, smart PhDs to help him. But of course he guided the research approach and that led to some of this understanding of how to regenerate limbs. In fact, as of now, he's actually, it's kind of mostly in stealth mode, but he's talked about it a little bit. Now has a company that is fully funded to the tunes of tens of millions of dollars, and they say that they're building the potential to regenerate limbs in people. And like according to a podcast I listened to, he said they're pretty much on track and things are going as well as he expected when he raised the money. So. We'll see how this goes. But he's always been interested in what kind of animals out in nature have actually been able to regrow limbs or different body parts depending on what's lost. And after documenting all the different types of species that can regenerate limbs and other things like that, you have to start asking the question, how does it work? What are the mechanisms? Why is it happening? And that's where his team started developing these fundamental principles that allow cells and tissues to form complex structures in the first place and incredibly to actually reform these structures in a way that is actually responsive to injury, manipulation, or as we're gonna see in a second, the correct bioelectrical signal. So bioelectrical signaling has been relatively unexplored until recent, I mean, there's been some people doing it for decades, but it's been relatively recent that business use cases and money have started pouring into this industry. Now, of course, there's an nearly infinite ways that you can use electricity in a biological system. So 
most of them aren't gonna trigger anything. So we have to figure out which exact signals trigger things and then start documenting all of those. And that's what we're in the very early stages of, but there is some documentation out there and there is some expertise that has been put into this and there are some guides. So it turns out that very subtle electrical signals at various times in development or triggered at certain times as a response to something that is hurting or something that is being repaired can trigger these cascades. And we're talking about every cell that's grouped together of the same cell type has the same communication skills. That's why, you know, cutting the worm directly in half, if it's a little bit to the left or the right, is still gonna be enough to generate the other half. It doesn't have to be like, an exact moment or place. But the caveat to that is that oftentimes these signals, these bioelectric signals also need to kind of play off different hormones and different neurotransmitters and sometimes other aspects of the body. So it does kind of matter what stage the organism is in. It does kind of matter how many surrounding cells are around it and what those types are. It does kind of matter if the right hormones are running throughout the bloodstream at the same time. So there isn't just like a free for all, but sometimes there's quite a range of variability that you can play with. First backbone of Levin's research is that you can use this kind of signaling for tissue growth and that incorporated in the bioelectrical signal is enough information for the cells and the surrounding cells around them to know what their function is, but also their location and organization within the tissue. For example, when a salamander regrows a lost limb, it's the bioelectric signaling that guide the cells to form the correct structure in the right place. But now imagine that in the future, AI and, and just lots of research and good old hard work actually give us a huge map of bioelectrical signals and all the things they can do for all the creatures around us, but especially for humans. Imagine what that means. Like we rarely talk about any kind of health system where you can actually regenerate like a lost finger or a limb or more tissue when you've been burned or anything like that. And this might be the beginning of all of that kind of research. For example, in a podcast I was listening to, he was talking about him and his team and how they could actually take the cells that line the inside of our guts, it put a bioelectrical signal at that location, and it would regenerate an entire eyeball. Or not, not regenerate, it would actually grow an eyeball where it doesn't belong because they gave it the signal to grow there, it just grew there. And of course that made me think, like, if you can't fix somebody's eye, are we ever going to be in a world in the future where you could, I don't know, I hate to say this, but like remove the eye, and then go to that area where it came from, like behind it, and then give that bioelectrical signal and have it grow the whole thing again. I mean, obviously as an adult, that wouldn't connect right or properly, probably just because of the way the eye and the brain work and it wouldn't be lined up the same, but it's just a, it's an interesting way to think about the human body. Or maybe you just take cells and put them in a Petri dish and grow like a liver or something from it. And then you can put that back in the person. I don't know, maybe all of this is possible. Now it seems like this is gonna be a boon for treating degenerative diseases, so things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and muscular dystrophy, because in theory you can use the bioelectrical signals to regenerate the tissue that's starting to degrade. Boom, new cells are healthy cells, so this could be a method to kind of reverse everything if you just slowly go out there and take away all the broken stuff and just regenerate good stuff, like, you do it piece by piece and eventually you replace the whole thing. But also, as if everything on this channel I talk about doesn't open up a Pandora's box, this is absolutely no different. If you can make an eyeball on the inside of like a gut, that's kind of freaky. The philosophical questions of messing with life at such a fundamental level is something we have to take really seriously. It's very powerful to be able to send a small signal and see a cascade happen, but that could easily get out of control. It could cause problems. It could, you know, put limbs where they don't need to be. So we have to consider the responsibility that comes with this kind of power. So I have linked below a bunch of podcasts, a bunch of his work. You should definitely check this stuff out. On one podcast, he was introduced as like a man who has a discovery that should be equivalent with Watson and Crick, and this should be thought of as Nobel Prize worthy. Work. Already, it's like deserving of a Nobel Prize, which you've, which you've already been able to accomplish. And you just, it's just think of the implications of what your work um, could bear out in the future. It's, it's remarkable. You might've been hyping him up a little, but also when you really think about it, this is pretty game changing. So make sure to give a little bioelectrical shock to that subscribe button. Help me get to my next goal, 9,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching.